pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming your co-moderators, Kim Stevens and Kathy Fisher. Do you want to stand there? Stand there. I'll start and then, uh, yeah. then I'll toss the ball over to you. Sounds good. Great. I read the other day about the global myth that water is an unending natural <coughs> resource. Droughts, pollution, unsustainable development. On Vancouver Island, we know we have it good. And to be a flagship model for freshwater sustainability, we need to keep asking the right questions and get into action on those questions, like keeping forefront, what is it that we want Vancouver Island to look like in the next 50 years? I sit on the board of Leadership Vancouver Island, which is a community-based leadership program that develops skills and upcoming leaders. In June, the board hosted the first annual leadership dialogues out at Vancouver Island University. And as a board, we decided to steerhead this project because we really believe that what we ask our participants to take on community programs, we also are, um, we also need to also lead in, in what we model and say. So we decided on freshwater sustainability because water is essential to all of us. Taking the lead on the project, the first thing I did was go to the computer and Google water sustainability on Vancouver Island, which up popped convening action for Vancouver Island, up popped Kim in terms of the contact, and so I emailed him and within 20 minutes got a reply. Talk about um, fast, quick response. You were just lucky that day. <laughs> I don't know if I was or not, because you know what, through the connections that I've met with Kim and <coughs> Cabby, I really see that we've got a, a group of people that are movers and shakers that really rise to an opportunity to get things done. <coughs> Um, and really want to work in collaboration. So at this point, I'd like to introduce my, my cohort in this, um, Kim Stevens. Um, if you saw sort of the bio, Kim is the virtual secretariat for Water Sustainability Action <coughs> Plan for British Columbia, the partnership umbrella for an array of on-the-ground initiatives that promote a water-centric approach to community planning and development. Kim has 37 years of experience encompassing the spectrum of water resource and infrastructure engineering application. He specializes in public policy and integration of perspectives as they relate to urban watershed planning and has a leadership role in a series of provincial initiatives in BC related to water. And so today I'm going to actually turn it over to him, one of those being Beyond the Guidebook 2010. And I'd like him to speak on that and the importance of it. So. Thanks, Kathy. And I guess before I do, we're cognizant of the fact that you know the lunch time went longer than expected, right? So we we have to adjust in terms of uh, the 25 minutes that we started late. Yes. And so uh, I guess one thing we won't be doing is we won't be having a break. We'll just go straight through now. We have a late start, so hopefully you can tolerate us for that long. Um, as you can see from here, I mean, you know, there's there's times. And, and so we're trying to be a little bit different in terms of, you know, when we say the integrated presentation, we mean that. And, uh, and especially when we get into the, the, uh, the, the town hall segment, that we need to have an informed discussion with you. Our colleagues need to, need to uh, give you some information. And so I, we are glad to see a few familiar faces, like Kate Doyle in the back of the Calvary Valley Regional District, and, <coughs> and, 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 and Dick from uh, the, or the deep bay one, no, Bowser. 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 So, uh, yeah, because I mean, this is today, right? Last time you were the uh, media, weren't you? That's how they did you in? Yes. So it's nice to have a few people who actually s seen this before. Because <laughs> what Kathy didn't tell you when, when we um, had this uh, dialogue in the Nine Ball, Kathy wanted to try something different with this. And so rather than making presentations, it was like an improv. Ooh, improv theater. In, yeah, it's improv theater where we did, well, we had a couple of rehearsals. Everybody felt kind of awkward because we didn't know what we were going to do, but then we did it okay on the day where the whole idea was we just were supposed to start the conversation with what, five or six of us? Yes. And it was like bing, 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 bing. So, because your PhD work right now is integrating performance and leadership, performance and leadership and right? Results. So, yeah, so it's like a package. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the only guy about putting that twin, because it was interesting listening to Wendy today because. Uh, and I can look at Kate because I'm sure you'll give me a comment because uh, 
what we're talking about is the local government setting. Now, I'm not an employee of local government, but where we're operating is in the, in the world of local government, and the, and the chair of Kathy John Finney will keep talking shortly. And, and um, so when I was listening to Wendy talk, and, and uh, as well as with Eric and, and, and Tim, um, we heard a, a lot of things that we've experienced since 2006. Like, for example, by waving this document the same way as Wendy did, you know, the story captures their voices, captures Kate's voice, captures John's voice. Because what we found was that, you know, and I, the reason we call it Beyond the Guidebook was because in 2002, I was the project manager and principal author for a provincial guidance document called Stormwater Planning, a Guidebook for British Columbia. So this is Beyond the Guidebook 2010. And that document was a transformational document. So we knew that, that it was not a case of producing technical documents. And we knew a decade ago we had to follow the educational route. And so I think what we've been doing is being the pilot for what Wendy was talking about today. And how the lessons that we've gone through can inform what, you know, what, I always get confused, let's see, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it takes time, and you hear that, the change of practitioner culture, and so what we have written is the story of what the champions are doing, and that's partly what we're talking about, the lessons learned. And so in terms of what's going on in the local government setting, for us, this is a pretty powerful diagram. Am I blocking your view? What you do? Okay. <laughs> because what this is showing you is the, you know, the number of initiatives where people have begun collaborating and within regions and have begun talking, and going that next step is then having the regions talk to each other. Because four or five years ago when we started this process, what we found was that within a valley, if there could be four or five jurisdictions, they weren't talking to each other. So if they weren't talking to each other in the Cowichan Valley, right, Kate? then the Cowichan Valley wasn't talking to the Comox Valley, and yet everybody's doing something. And so what this starts to capture is, in all these different regions, the precedent-setting initiatives about changing what we do on the ground to change how <coughs> we treat water, how we treat the land. And so having the acronym being director of Vancouver Island, you'll see the five, the, the five initiatives, all the way from Comox Valley down to the Capital Regional District, the Boca Creek Blueprint. The cross-fertilization is taking place with Metro Vancouver. The cross-fertilization is taking place with to the Okanagan, and the fact that what we're talking about today started in the South Okanagan as our test. The lessons we learned in the South Okanagan, we applied on Vancouver Island. Those lessons learned on the island have now gone back into a inform what they're doing in the South Okanagan. So, you know, the re inter-regional collaboration is happening. <coughs> so, this <coughs> is kind of the synopsis of what we've learned in terms of principles. And you heard uh, Wendy talk about principles in terms of. Uh, how will good things start to happen when people choose to be enabled? And we often hear in the world of local government is, you know, local government is enabled. We'll choose to do it. And, you know, establishing high expectations, the shared vision. You heard all this stuff this morning, but this is what's been going on in the setting of local government. And so, culminating in number 10, as you, as you, as you quickly scan this list, you know, aligning, integrating, celebrating innovation, connecting with community advocates. This has been very powerful in connecting with community. Developing talent and you know, the sharing of resources. You heard that this morning from Wendy. Everybody's doing less with, you know, doing more with less, and shared responsibility. We all have a part to play. Changing the land ethic. It's all about land, land ethic. So, Kathy, have I more than used up my three minutes? I think you're getting out of time, Kim. And I think you know. Just are you going to continue on? With nope, that's you. It's such, is that, okay, good. Um, I think one of the things I just want to say in terms of leadership dialogue, one of the things <coughs> that really came out of that was. Um, there was a lot of ideas and idea, um, tasks that were sort of generated, but a real tangible result was the connection between CAVI, with leadership Vancouver Island, with the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance, and also looking at how to expand that coalition. So again, as Kim was talking about, shared responsibility, you know, regional team, what does that look like? 